2020 was certainly a hectic year for every one of us, but fortunately, video games have been there for us through every moment of the year. Hey guys, Game Prime here, and these are my top 10 games of 2020. In a year where we needed games the most, the industry definitely provided. It was an insane year for video games, with some of the best games ever made releasing, as well as plenty of sequels and refreshers of what's to come in the near future. Let's get started with... Number 10, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. The first game on this list goes to one of my favorite genres, the 3D platformer. I was deciding to either pick this or the Spongebob Battle 4 Bikini Bottom Rehydrated remake, and I'm going with Crash because it's the better developed game and better polished game. If you gave this game to a random person who has only had experience with the original three Crash games, they will think that this game is developed by Naughty Dog. That is probably the biggest compliment I could give Crash 4. The team at Toys for Bob knew what worked in the originals, knew the right amount of difficulty to put into the game, along with them sprinkling some of their own new, unique ideas into it, and we got a phenomenal sequel that lives up to the glory of the original Naughty Dog trilogy. Number 9. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory It is insane to think about that in 2020 alone, we got the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC, in this game, the next chapter in the Kingdom Hearts series, Melody of Memory. It was the first ever Kingdom Hearts rhythm game, along with being a phenomenal recap of every game in the series up until now. The mapping for the songs weren't always perfect at times, and some other things like character models were a bit lazy, but being able to relive over a hundred of the series' greatest songs and revisit worlds that we have a deep connection to was a great nostalgia trip, and I am 100% ready for whatever Nomura has planned for the rest of the series going forward. Number 8, Animal Crossing New Horizons. If 2020 had a game that was synonymous with the year, and the events that occurred throughout the year, it would be Animal Crossing New Horizons. This game came out at the perfect time. I don't think I've ever seen a more perfect time for a video game to release in my life. This game released right when it seemed like the entire world shut down, and it was the perfect time to dedicate every breathing hour of every day to building your town, meeting new villagers, and hanging out with your friends virtually. Even though for me the game got repetitive after just a few months, I firmly believe that Animal Crossing New Horizons saved a lot of people from going completely insane in 2020 and helped them cope with what was going on and overall help them escape from the burning outside world. Hopefully I'll get back into the game in 2021 because I know the team is still hard at work updating the game every month and adding even more new events and things to do with your villagers and real life friends. Number 7, Ghost of Tsushima. A couple years ago it was announced that Sucker Punch Productions would once again stray away from a beloved franchise in an attempt to create something completely brand new. They did this with great success with Ghost of Tsushima. Taking an open world approach to the samurai genre, this game mixed Assassin's Creed with Zelda Breath of the Wild and even a little bit of Sly. Admittingly I haven't put as many hours into this game as I want to, but from what I have played, I could say that this game is breathtaking from a visual aspect and controls wonderfully. I've really enjoyed my time with this game so far and I can't wait to finish Jin's story when I continue this game on the PS5 very soon. Number 6, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. What am I a sucker for? Nostalgia. What am I also a sucker for? Anything that has to do with Super Mario. 2020 was supposed to be a very big year for the plumber. Luckily, it still was pretty big enough, and it reached its peak with the announcement of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. After being rumored for many, many months, it was finally revealed that Nintendo would be bringing Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy to the Nintendo Switch. I personally was hyped from the very beginning. I know others weren't hyped as much, and that's okay, but these three games I grew up with, and the ability to play them in HD and on the go anywhere made this an instant buy. In fact, I bought this game a handful of times. One to open and display, and one to keep to get graded for my personal collection someday down the road. This game, however, is a limited release, so it will practically disappear from the eShop and retail stores come March 31st. Now, to get into the games. 
Super Mario 64 honestly is my least favorite in this collection. Don't get me wrong, I love the game and I know that without Super Mario 64, we wouldn't have pretty much any game we do today. But it hasn't aged well at all. I don't have as much fun playing it as I do the other two games in the collection, and I just don't go back to it as much as I do the others. One flaw Nintendo had with this game in particular, when it comes to this collection, would be that they kept it in the 4x3 aspect ratio, although they put Sunshine and Galaxy in full widescreen HD. I'm not sure what the decision was for this, but it was odd and just off-putting when compared to Sunshine and Galaxy. Sunshine was fun to revisit and looks great in full HD. Super Mario Galaxy, however, is benefited the most from this collection. At the beginning of the year, I said I wanted to replay Super Mario Galaxy, and I'm glad to say that I did, and I had a blast with it. They added full Joy-Con and Pro Controller support, and it works just as great that way as the original Wii Remote controls. I'm not joking when I say this, but Super Mario Galaxy can seriously pass as a triple A Nintendo Switch game. It looks so sharp, plays so well, and just belongs home on the Switch. Nintendo also included the three soundtracks to each game in this too, although you can only listen to them on the game and not anywhere else, which kinda sucks. At first when this was released, they changed the camera controls for every game, and that really affected me when it came to Sunshine in particular with aiming flood and other camera controls within the game. But in November, they actually updated it and added the original camera controls back in, along with full GameCube controller support, so everything is how it should be. Super Mario 3D All-Stars is a phenomenal package though, and you can't go wrong picking this up if you haven't already. It's worth it for Sunshine and Galaxy alone. This collection makes me even more excited for what Nintendo may have planned for the Legend of Zelda series, which celebrates its 35th anniversary in just a month. Number 5, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. One of 2018's best games was Marvel's Spider-Man. I was put to tears with how great Insomniac games did with taking the world of Spider-Man and making it their own. Me and my friends lost it when they revealed the next game in the series, Spider-Man Miles Morales, this past June when Sony showcased games for the PS5. Wait, is this Spider-Man? It is. Oh my god! Yes! Yo! Oh my god! Oh my god. Yes! When I got my PS5 in November, this was the first game I played on it. I don't think I've had more fun with a launch day title in my life. They took everything that was great about the first game and just made it unique to Miles' character in a snowy winter New York. Beating up enemies, swinging around in New York City, and so much more felt great on the new DualSense controller. The new haptic feedback made the game feel so much more alive and immersed you in the world. The story takes place about a year and a half after the original Spider-Man does and puts you in the shoes of the young up-and-coming Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Miles is so unique and has his own playstyle that is so different from Peter. The Venom powers, unique swinging, and the more agile movements really made Miles feel unique and I really hope he's playable in the inevitable Marvel Spider-Man 2. If you haven't already, you need to play this game in the 2018 original. They're both spectacular, amazing, and ultimate. You won't regret it. Number 4, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I haven't had much luck with Final Fantasy games. I tried 15 when it came out a few years ago, loved the two demos but couldn't get into the actual game. Tried 10, couldn't get into it. Tried Type 0 HD, couldn't get into it. Played about the first 30 minutes of the original Final Fantasy VII and never went back to it because I had RPG fatigue from just finishing Persona 3. But even though I went through all those games and didn't get hooked on any of them, I knew back when it got revealed in 2015 that I would love the Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I was right. It feels dirty calling this game a remake, because it's so much more than that from what I could tell. They took the original material and are morphing it into a brand new story all on its own. This game had one of the best stories of the year, had a fantastic soundtrack that I still hum almost every day, especially Hip Hop to Chocobo, and was genuinely fun to play most of the time.
Some of the bosses were a bit tedious, and I died a lot. This game challenged me, but it was fun, and it gave me the same kind of grind and challenge the Kingdom Hearts games give me. I had a ton of fun with this game, and I really can't wait to see what they do next, whenever they do the next installment. I'm on board for the ride, and I can't wait to see the destination. Number 3, The Last of Us Part 2 It was really hard deciding what would get the number 3 and number 2 spot, because I think they're both some of the best games of the year, and I even changed their spot once I got done writing number 2, but I thought the next game deserves the number 2 spot more. I loved The Last of Us. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and I hope everyone gets to experience it for themselves because it's one of the best stories told in any medium, and it's practically flawless. When The Last of Us 2 got announced, I was over the moon. I was in tears when I finally got to play this game for myself and experience the next chapter of Joel and Ellie's journey. But what I got was a haunting, chilling, and one of the most uncomfortable and unique experiences I've ever witnessed in a video game. Without spoiling it, this game shook me to my core and that's what made it so good. Now looking back, I definitely agree with a lot of people's complaints about the pacing of the story. It's definitely weird, but it was done in a specific way and overall, it was an unexpected way for them to tell the story. The gameplay, however, has to be one of the most pleasing and smooth experiences you'll ever feel in a video game. They spent so much time perfecting every single little thing in the gameplay. It could also be very stressful at times, most specifically when you're deciding on the fly how you want to tackle the encounters with either humans, dogs, or the infected. When I beat this game, I was shook to my core and I couldn't really explain how I felt. It was just that unique. But I will say, you need to have a full understanding of part one before you play part two. I can't imagine anyone liking this game if they don't have a strong connection to Joel and Ellie. The Last of Us Part 2 is still a phenomenal game though, and proves why Naughty Dog is on the top of the food chain. I'm so ready to see what they do next, and where they can take this series if they decide to continue it. Do yourself a favor, play The Last of Us Part 1, and then play Part 2. These games are designed to be enjoyed back to back, and you will experience some of the best and unique storytelling in any medium. Number 2, Paper Mario the Origami King. In January, I saw a rumor that there would be a new Paper Mario game coming out. I got excited and hoped for the best, but I couldn't get too excited, because the last two Paper Mario games were pretty bad. Then, in May, they revealed Paper Mario the Origami King. I was very optimistic from the first trailer alone, but it wasn't until I actually played it that I fell in love with it. You heard it here, I fell in love with a Paper Mario game for the first time since 2007. They finally did so much right in a Paper Mario game. They ditched the world map and went back to an interconnected world similar to the first two games. They finally added in a battle system that was fun. It might not have meant a whole lot, and you might not have gotten experience points, but it was still fun. The ring battle system worked, and it was super unique. It wasn't until the very end of the game where I got just a little bit tired of it. Not even a whole lot. It was fine. And people need to realize that. I play Paper Mario for the adventure it shows, not for the battle systems. Sticker Start and Color Splash got a lot wrong with both and overall had generally boring stories compared to the first three games, and this game. But this game did so much right, and I don't think it's given as much credit as it should. This game has so much packed into it that in a way, it felt like the proper Paper Mario game we've all been waiting for. But people still call it Sticker Star 3 or Color Splash 2. To those people, you can go stick it yourself. Along with the interconnected world, you had collectibles to find, amazing writing, a phenomenal soundtrack which shocked me and almost brought me to tears multiple times, and most importantly, an all-star cast of characters. Now partners came back, but they were different and unique compared to the original two games. 
but that's okay, because this game doesn't have to be a copy and paste of 64 or Thousand Year Door. This game has folded its own identity, and I loved it so much. Your main partner Olivia isn't annoying at all, and is genuinely a great character. Bobby. Oh man, I don't want to go too in depth, but Bobby the bob is one of my favorite Mario characters of all time. Luigi, Bowser, Bowser Jr., they all had amazing moments and just covered this game in so much life and provided so many great moments. Please everyone give this game a fair chance because it easily is one of the best games of the whole year and one of the best games you could play on the Nintendo Switch. This game really gives me a lot of hope about the future of the Paper Mario series. And real quick before we get to number one, here are some unscripted thoughts on my honorable mentions. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 was fun, first time playing it ever, never touched a Tony Hawk game but they were really fun. Pikmin 3 Deluxe was a great game they finally brought over to the Wii U. Moving Out was a fun multiplayer game I was able to play with my friends. Same goes for Minecraft Dungeons. Battletoads was a great revival and a fun little beat-em-up but was horribly marketed. Jackbox Party Pack 7 is also a fun game to play with friends and is probably the best Jackbox in years. The Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope was pretty okay but nothing you know compared to Until Dawn. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity fills a great gap waiting for Breath of the Wild 2. Mafia Definitive Edition made me want to go back to playing GTA. Astro's Playroom is another phenomenal launch title for the PS5 that makes full use of the system's hardware and controller. Doom Eternal was gory. Dreams is super unique and has so much put into it for a make your game game. Fall Guys was very fun, although it kind of fell off in Season 2. The Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC was phenomenal and wrapped up all the story of Kingdom Hearts 3 pretty well, along with leaving the door open for what's next. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated was a decent remake of a great SpongeBob game. Definitely showed its age and was a little glitchy at first. Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. This game was a lot of fun to go back to after starting the original DMC5 back in 2019 finally went and beat this just a few days ago and this game is the whole reason this video is very late and then finally the Super Smash Bros Fighters Pass 1 and 2 being the end of Fighters Pass 1 with Byleth, Min Min, Steve and Sephiroth being in Fighters Pass 2 all great characters Sephiroth was a phenomenal addition and I love how well they treated him and with that being said, my pick for the top game of 2020 goes to Persona 5 Royal. I have covered nearly all of my thoughts of this game in my review, so I'm going to try and make this short and sweet. Persona 5 Royal is a masterpiece in nearly every way possible, and this is a true technical feat in the video game genre. Persona 5, which was originally released in 2017 here in the States, was already a 10 out of 10 game. Atlas somehow managed to take Persona 5 Royal and make it an 11 out of 10. They took everything that made the vanilla game great and tweaked, fixed, and added so much that I didn't think it would be possible to even do so. Being half a social simulation game and half a JRPG, they added new elements to both that vastly improved over the original. Without listing everything they did, they added a handful of new characters, story elements, locations to hang out, new palaces to explore, and in a way, they made a complete retelling of the original Persona 5 story. The quality of life improvements made to the overall gameplay was stunning, and it made the game even more addictive to play. The music was as amazing as it was the first time around, and with the 30 plus new tracks they added, it made my soul happy listening to every new song Shoji Meguro and Lin composed and wrote for this game. Being able to revisit one of my favorite games of all time, but still being able to discover new stories and characters along the way was an experience I'll never forget and I will hold this game close to my heart as long as I live so it never gets stolen from me. 
If you want to hear me gush about this game even more, you could check out my review which will be in the cards up above, and you could check out the multiple spoiler casts I did with my friends on our podcast, the 4PG Loading Screen Podcast, available anywhere you find your favorite podcasts, and the links are also in the description below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all continue to stay smart, safe, and healthy throughout these insane times, and here's to an amazing 2021 with even more amazing games. Thanks for watching once again, and I will see you all very soon.